So Risk of Rain 2 is my favorite roguelite looter shooter to come out and today my cat Basil and I have some notes to share with you about how you can win monsoon runs more consistently. I'm gonna share with you the three main things that I changed about my playstyle that allowed me to win monsoon runs more efficiently and that will allow you to unlock some of the sick alternate skins like this one right here. So let's get into it. Hello everybody, my name is Johnny. Join me as I do a fresh monsoon run and I talk to you about the first concept for today, which is ABS. Uh, always be sprinting, guys. Always be sprinting, always be jumping as well. And why do we do this? Not only does it give you, obviously, better terrain traversal abilities, uh, it also makes you almost immune to most of the ground units right so like these guys are gonna have a very very hard time hitting us if we're sprinting and jumping all over the place now that includes sprinting right after casting a spell okay we just cast uh, a skill right there and immediately after we start sprinting you do the arrows get used to immediately pressing shift after okay you want to have very little downtime where you're not sprinting okay you never want to be just walking leisurely like this okay you're asking for it you're asking to get it in monsoon if you're moving like that and anywhere but beyond the the first stage you're gonna get punished real hard second thing you're not only harder to get hit by projectiles but you're also more likely to evade aoe attacks that come your way so let's say if a boss has a big aoe attack if you're moving really fast and jumping chances are you're not gonna be there anymore by the time the attack lands right and every little bit of luck and chance like that we want to get it and we get it for free if we abs so abs furthermore there are several items that take advantage of you sprinting right so you can talk about the rose buckler that gives you about a 23 percent damage decrease uh, or mitigation if you're sprinting uh you can talk about the soda can or i call it the soda can so again get in the habit of always sprinting now very important this isn't just for the hunters guys okay even if you're playing the engineer you want to be moving around all the time just because you have the bubble from the engineer doesn't mean that you should be in the bubble all the time all right that's a recipe for disaster beyond stages four and beyond uh because there are a lot of ground enemies that can get to you and really make your day a bad one right uh they can splash damage they can get inside the bubble and uh, and kill you very quickly so you don't want to stay in one spot ever in monsoon as a guy okay next up time is of the essence my dudes okay no dilly dallying in the first three stages I know you want to grab every item out there, you're a greedy fuck like me, and that's okay. But we're gonna get past that, and we're gonna go straight to the teleporter, right? Look for the red dots on the air that mark the teleporter. You go straight to that fucker, okay? You can grab about three items before you pop it. Make sure you're about almost level three or something like that before you do the boss to give yourself the best chance. But you don't need anything beyond that, and you shouldn't be going out of your way to get shit you should go straight to the boss grab those first two or three items do the boss whatever's in the vicinity that you can see after the boss is done grab it anything that would require you to go far ignore it it's gonna hurt you but ignore it okay move on and chop chop right stages one through three we want to chop chop stage four is where we farm so our timings for an ideal run look like something like this we're gonna be in stage two at around five minutes we're gonna grab the newt altar and we're gonna go to the snowy area okay and once you're there you want to get there at around minute nine pre minute 10 so you can grab the prion accumulator in that level i'll make a separate video to show you where it is but basically look for the light beacons and there are three spots on the map that it can be at you want to grab the prion accumulator it's gonna help you get rid of bosses quickly and it's a guaranteed drop so why not grab it now in this level you also want to hit the newt altar so learn the different locations for those there are separate videos for that as well you want to go to abyssal depths as your fourth level 
So stage four, we want to be there at around minute 15. These aren't hard, you know, deadlines. Just use them as guidelines to see if you're behind the curve or ahead of the curve. Once you're in abyssal depths, we farm. Here is where we farm, my dudes, okay? You grab everything that's on the ground. Make sure you locate the legendary chest. Again, learn the locations for those. There's, they're typically in that small cave in the middle of the ground area. Start the teleporter and make sure that you get enough gold. If you don't have enough gold and the teleporter is about to charge up to 100%, step out of the teleporter area, kill dudes until you have the money, get the legendary and then get out, right? There are some exceptions where I would recommend you skip the legendary, but for the most part, if the run is going well, I would always, always grab it, okay? Once you're past this stage, here's where the run makes or breaks. If you come to stage 5 with shitty damage, it's not gonna go well, okay? It's gonna take you a long time to kill these damn enemies, and you're gonna get swarmed, things are probably not gonna go that well. So this kind of sets the tone for the rest of your run, and it's very, very critical that you've played smart up until this point, and that RNG is on your side, let's be real, there's a real part of uh, RNG in this, and if you didn't get good damage items until now, you may have, you know, a very difficult time here. But assuming you had decent RNG at this point, you should be able to truck through these enemies, when I get the teleporter, loop back, right? You're gonna get a loop, and then you can choose to obliterate. You could also choose to go into the final boss if that's what you prefer. But if you're going after the alternate skins, I find that the easiest way to get them is to just do a loop, go back to the to the stage three in your loop, uh, which would be stage eight maths. Uh, anyways, get there get the celestial portal obliterate yourself you get five lunar coins and you get the alternate skin as well okay so i want to talk to you about how do you identify and eliminate the highest threats in a fight so right here obviously a lot of our attention is going to be on the boss itself but uh we're going to get enemies like the flying wisps that are going to be able to snipe us very well so we have to be able to target those with high priority and eliminate them from the fight. If you let them build up, you're asking to get sniped. We don't want to get sniped. So of course you want to keep your focus on the boss as much as possible. You want to eliminate any possible high threats. Uh, the wisps are probably the most common one you're going to encounter. Later on you're going to encounter brass contraptions. Definitely want to take out those dudes. Their balls really hurt. And uh, don't take that out of context, please. Also remember Elder Lemurians. Lemurians? Lemurians. And uh, also the volcano dudes from Abyssal Depths. They're incredibly annoying and can really catch you off guard because you don't always see them casting their attacks. But for the most part, all of the basic ground units are very low threat to you. You can see during all of this fight, and my cat has jumped on my lap. Hello. Uh, during all of this fight, we've ignored the ground units, haven't done anything about them. When you get to this stage, the boss is eliminated, most of the flying enemies are also eliminated, you can focus your attention on them, on the ground units, and get rid of all of them. But really, most of your attention should be on the high threats, and all of the other stuff, as long as you're doing our ABS practice that we discussed earlier, you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Who's a good boy? That's it, guys. I hope the video helped you out. If it did, let me know down below. And hey, maybe drop a comment telling me what you want me to cover next on the channel. If you have any more questions, remember you can catch me live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And I'm happy to talk to you about the game over there. Answer any other questions, any follow-ups. Also, all of the VODs are here on YouTube as well. If you want to check out the channel and see some uncut gameplay and see how I actually put these ideas into practice a little bit more, do that. Lastly, the music you've been hearing in this video is from an album that I'm making freely available to everybody out there. So if you want to use it in your videos or streams, just ping me and I'll make it available to you, okay? It's my grain of sand and I hope you stay well. Enjoy the content on the channel and as always, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.